Hey everyone, uh, welcome back to Cybersecure TV. Uh, today we're going to discuss the uh, number 7 on the OAS top 10, which is the cross site scripting. Uh, interestingly, this vulnerability has always been on the top 10, just uh, like you know, ranking is here and there. But in this video, we're going to talk about the uh, in depth about what the cross site scripting is at the very beginner level, what's the difference between reflected and stored XSS, uh, how can you find the cross site scripting in your applications during the pen testing, what are the prevention techniques. So first off, uh, what is the access? So generally, if there is an insecure input, uh, suppose there is an input field and, and like you know, user provides some malicious value to it, and then it ends up storing it at the backend server or uh, reflecting back to the uh, application. That's when the uh, typical access happens. Uh, then of course, uh, that that happens because there is a lack of validation. The application does not validate whether the payload uh, matches to uh, what's the expected and, and like you know uh, the malicious JS code passed through the validation filter and this input is not just like you know uh, that visible to the uh, end users users can uh, intercept the request and in insert this payload uh, anywhere they like so that's include the search box form fields, cookies, headers, so whatever the hidden fields, so whatever, uh, the, uh, like, you know, uh, the carrier may be, so a carrier of the request to the response or to the uh, backend server, the attacker can inject this to the pay, uh, payload and, and, like, you know, pretty much execute it. Now, the uh, you must have uh, seen this before, like the reflected access and the stored access, and you're not sure. So in the simplest of terms, when the attacker socially engineers a victim into a clicking, uh, uh, like, you know, a, a, a link, uh, which is like a, which has a malicious payload, and then when the user clicks on it, executes on the browser, that's a reflected access. So it's just one time. I send you the link, you click on it, and it gets exploited. Now the stored cross site scripting is a bit more dangerous because it forces uh, a website to store the malicious code. Now once I'm, I as an attacker stores the like send out the malicious code, it's going to store into the application. It's going to store at least for a certain period of time, and then whenever the user uh, view that hacked web page or in order to be compromised. So here there is no clicking required. Whenever users uh, click on or come visit that page, uh, they'll be exploited. Uh, this type of attack uh, can spread very quickly and easily across social media applications because, of course, as we know, social media uh, uh, encourages viewing the profile pages of other connected users, and if a malicious payload is executed every time a user views the profile, then it takes the form of what's known as warm. So this is also, and you must have like you know heard about various forms in the in the uh, in the history. Uh, like there was one example of Yahoo as well. So this so, uh, sort of attack can uh, spread exponentially. Now, what are the possible uh, things that uh, attacker can exploit with the XSS? So one, uh, this is like you know very famous and very uh, common that they want to steal the session cookies, so they impersonate the user. Uh, and you must have seen an example like uh, alert uh, cookies, uh, like you know, uh, and value and all those things. So uh, one can easily get the session tokens and then then you uh, replicate or, or repeat that token to get the uh, user access. The next is still credentials. Uh, sometimes they write the script, attacker write the scripts and and store into the website uh, or the victim website, and then this be able to steal the credentials. Then you have the key logger. One can also have the key logger. So when whatever user is typing on the local system uh, would be logged, and uh, of course, then the attacker can derive several things from the log keys. And the last, uh, but also we have seen several times, is a deface of the website. So the uh, website will be defaced with some message, uh, maybe political, non-political, doesn't matter. But one can obviously deface the website. Now. How do you find this, right? How do you how, how can you find the uh, access and and how do you test or uh, bypass some of the like you know filters which are which applications usually implement? So uh, uh, first one uh, we have uh, on our channel Cybersecurity TV uh, we have the uh, full access filter bypass series. Uh, there are I, I don't 
I don't remember, but there are 13 or 14 episodes. So make sure you go through it each and every. Uh, it will help you to deal with various access filters that you come across during the testing and, and how do you bypass. I've also linked all of this into the description below, so definitely feel free to check it out. And uh, also follow me on the Facebook, so you also get the regular updates. Uh, second way, OWASP cheat sheet. Uh, this is uh, open source, so you just Google the OWASP cheat sheet for the access, and you should be able to find one. Uh, it's very uh, handy as well. Then, uh, if you are using Burp or OWASP Zap, uh, make sure uh, you can also find this from the active or passive scan. We saw that, I guess, in the last uh, last video about how do we how when we scanned one of the websites using the Zap, and it found the XSS. Now, the DOM-based access is a bit different, and and I have also done the video in the past, so feel free to check out the uh, like you know XSS series. And you can find that with the passive scan uh, from the burp. And if you are doing the gray box testing, then it's uh, best to review the codes for input and output and coding. And if the application is not doing one, then uh, there is a high probability that it could have like you know uh, access possibility. Now let's talk about the prevention. Uh, as easy as we say, like uh, escape the untrusted input. Uh, so how do we do that? So pretty much we encode. Uh, like you know, different malicious characters. If, if let's say the field requires the phone number, then only digits should be arrived, only uh, accepted, and and only uh, those should be permitted. All the other malicious characters, such as special character like this, less than greater than, should be encoded uh, using HTML URL or any be any other encoding. Then uh, defense in depth, you should be using content security policy. Uh, this. Actually, uh, use case for the content security policy we covered in one of the uh, HTTP security headers uh, series. So if you have not uh, seen that, definitely check it out. This is a good defense in depth to uh, protect against some uh, some very dangerous uh, vulnerabilities. Some of the headers are very, very useful. So uh, that's it I wanted to cover. Uh, definitely check out the description for all the links and all the uh, materials that you want to go forward uh, go with to professional like you know uh, improve yourself for the XSS and if you have any questions feel free to uh, message me here or on the Facebook and I'll, I'll try my best to respond uh, that's it for now thank you and I'll see you guys next week bye